Hi there, and welcome to an episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. Uh, my name is Dimitri Lylan, and I'm one of the co-hosts now helping Robert L put some good episodes and good content together. I have Stephen Huang with me from the Windows IoT team. Welcome Hi. to Toolbox. Thanks a lot. Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about Windows IoT. It's a really great topic. Um, I'm pretty passionate about it. That's how me and you get, get to know each other. I had, I had some questions and feedback. That was pretty cool that, yep. that you jumped in. And uh, I thought, hey, this would make actually a really good Toolbox episode. Uh, so the goal today, I think, is, is, is one to really make sure that uh, you and the audience g get a good overview of how to get started. Um, I found out that, that code wasn't my problem when I, when I decided to play around with Windows IoT myself. I found out that all of this stuff that we have uh, on the table here, that's, that's, that was the learning curve. That was a hard thing for me. So I'm hoping you, you can help our audience uh, unblock that the, the way through. I, didn't, I had to do it a little bit harder, right? Uh, but you, you can have a great description. So jump in and tell people, what is Windows IoT? Yeah. Totally. So I'm a PM on the Windows 10 IoT core team. And um, we basically build an operating system that is Windows 10, but it's the smallest version of Windows 10 IoT, or Windows 10. And it's specifically made for Internet of Things yeah. IoT. So the Internet of Things is this breadth of connected devices that you know, take data from sensors, they connect to motors and actuators, and they uh, talk to each other and exchange data. And you've seen them in houses, uh, in workplaces, it's becoming very popular. Right. This idea of making things smart, right? Your smart fridges, smart thermostats, that sort yeah. of thing. And, and so now, basically, Windows 10 IoT Core is designed to help you build those things. Um, we make it really easy to access hardware, which is something you traditionally can't do with a laptop or a tablet. It's very hard to access and connect to hardware, motors, lights, uh, that sort of stuff. And so, it's the wrong form factor, right? It's, yeah. it's, you don't want a laptop stuck underneath your, your car. You want a little device that maybe is running a sensor or something, or Absolutely. your fridge, whatever it is. Definitely, definitely. Um, and so we are like Windows 10. We share the same code base underneath, which means when you write an app, it's a universal Windows platform that you're running on. Um, and so an app can basically transfer between the uh, computer on your desktop or Xbox or you know, that sort of yeah, thing. Your phone, your IoT device, yeah. it's, all, it's all the same UWP app, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you have to take performance into consideration a little bit as you switch hardware, but your code totally. doesn't have to change. Yeah, um, but it's, it is very specific to writing IoT things. So you can yeah. actually uh, access hardware um, through things like buses. So uh, we have here a Raspberry Pi just on this. And you can see on the side, this is what makes it a little interesting, is these, these pins here allow you to actually connect yeah. wires to them uh, and hook up all sorts of cool stuff. Yeah, we've got another example here. I've got a Raspberry Pi hooked onto the back of an LCD display, and it might be easier for folks to see the, the wire in the way we're talking about, right? Yeah. GPIO is what this is called, right? Yeah. Cool. So they're, they're general purpose input output uh, pins. Oh, that's what it stands for. Yeah, right? that's what they stand <laughs> you for. You learn something new every day. Yeah. Um, and there's lots of boards. The most popular for makers is the Raspberry Pi, but we are actually, uh, we are actually supporting a bunch of boards. We have here. The Intel Jewel, which is made by Intel. Mm -hmm. um, we also support a couple ARM boards, um, like the Raspberry Pi, and we have a Dragon board. And so um, these devices are interesting because they vary, obviously, in, in hardware qualities. So for example, if you want to do something uh, graphical intensive and you want to use the hardware accelerator, the Dragon board is great. Um, so some of them have dif different advantages over, totally. over the boards. Totally, yeah. And there's different price points. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 3, I believe, is $35. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cheap. It's really great for people who want to learn for the very first time, get started, maybe prototype something, uh, try some stuff out. But if you're looking to make a professional product, there's other stuff out there mm -hmm. for you to try. You know, um, People make custom boards for their own productization, commercialization efforts. Um, there's lots of different options out there. Yeah. And one of the cool things is you, you can use a Raspberry Pi. You can test your idea, right? You can do it on the cheap. Yeah. You can build your code once, and then you can get a different device that maybe is better suited for the actual you know, prototype you want to build, and then you can keep moving. It doesn't, there's no restriction because the C-sharp code just transfers with you. That's right. So it, it totally transfers. Um, you might need to make minor adjustments based on the hardware. Sure. But it's not huge, generally speaking. It's, it's pretty straightforward to transfer code between the different devices. Cool. Well, uh, I think uh, you know, it, it's good to understand that you have all these options with devices, right? And that your code is one, is one code base. And it was one of the hardest things for me to understand initially when I started looking at this. I, I said to myself, well, I've always heard Raspberry Pi. But then I ran into all these other boards. And I, yeah. and I was like, hmm, is there, is, there, is there like a newer board and an older board? Yeah. But it wasn't the dynamic, right? It's just right. there's different boards with different hardware configurations, different performance capabilities. I, uh, I was testing a Pi 2. Then I got a Pi 3. Just, everything just kept working. I just 
That's right. Show the device. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So the cool thing with the Raspberry Pi 3 is it actually has built-in Wi-Fi. Uh. And Windows is great. Um, even though we have a bunch of wires here, we're on a corporate network, so we, yeah. you know, just to make things uh, work nicer. But the Raspberry Pi 3 actually doesn't need to be connected to anything. Mm -hmm. You can actually have it standalone, connect to power, and it'll connect to your Windows PC. And that's what makes us yeah. interesting and different is that all of your coding actually happens on the PC itself in Visual Studio. So you write your code in Visual Studio. And when you're done, you can actually push it down remotely onto your device, and it'll run. So for example, a lot of people actually build devices and uh, products that don't use a display. Mm -hmm. We actually call them headless. Yeah. Ones with, with devices that have uh, displays on them are called headed, mm -hmm. headed devices. So if you're building without UI, you don't need an extra monitor, which is kind of a pain if you don't, you know, if you don't have an extra monitor laying around. Yeah, and so, I had that problem at home. You know, when you're at home, this can actually easily connect to your Wi-Fi network. Your board will actually be found on your uh, Windows 10 PC, and then you can push code remotely down between. Yeah, so. it's really cool. And then you, you can use you know attachable displays like this, right? Yeah, That's what I, totally. I did at some point. I said, hey, that'd be cool. Buy one of them, connected it up, and it was very seamless. There was nothing. It was plug and play, yeah. right, for basic purposes. Totally. And the power even connected out, so I didn't have to have, like multiple power cords or anything. I could just have one one device, one power cord, one display, and then it's a touch screen, so I was able to touch and, and test my app on yeah. it. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about um, something that I think uh, people you know often get confused on. Also, is the whole licensing situation yeah. on using Windows IT. So what what is it like to sort of use this legitimately for your you know prototyping purposes or moving yeah. further down the, the pipe? So Windows 10 IoT Core is free for everybody. There is a catch. If you are a maker, using it for educational purposes or just for fun, it's free, no strings attached, um, pretty much plug and play. You just cool. grab it and you go. If you are actually planning to build a commercial device, you do need to sign a license agreement, which requires you to make sure you know, you're in compliance and you know, you're updating your images and you make sure updates are working, right. uh, but it's still free of charge. Cool. So it's nice. All right, so how would people get started? I mean, it's great, you bought the board, right? But it doesn't come with the OS on the device, right? So right. What, what's that experience like? So there's different ways to get started. It's, if you're new, um, we actually provide uh, starter kits, and there's lots of them around. Yeah. This one is sold and made by Adafruit, so they basically package together a whole bunch of uh, goodies in here to get you started, especially if you're brand new, kind of want to get a feel, don't have all the equipment. Um, this one actually pre-packaged pre with a board, uh, an SD card, and noobs. Mm -hmm. So for those that are familiar with Linux and the Raspberry Pi ecosystem, noobs is on here so you can get started. Cool. If you are like someone like me who has stuff already, uh, we actually have applications that help you, you know, download the operating system onto an SD card, put it onto your device, and get connected. And we can run to that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's let's take a look at that. I do want to show folks one thing. Uh, it's just easier to grab this one. So yeah. um, over here, it's maybe hard to see for folks in, in, on the audience, but there is an SD card right here. That's right. And that's how the OS gets onto the device, right? Yeah. So the device itself has no operating system. Doesn't have Linux or Windows or anything. That's right. You plug in the card. We're going to show how how you configure that in a second. Yeah. And you just start the device, and Windows pops up on your screen, like we sure have running back here. That's yeah. already a board that's fully configured, but let's walk people through that experience of sure. how did they actually get started from their laptop when they have nothing but their empty SD card in their hand. Totally. So we're actually going to start uh, switch to my laptop. Mm -hmm. And um, the first thing uh, people need to do is get to our website. Yeah. And so if we're starting brand new, I'm actually going to get a fresh window here on uh, Bing. If we want to search something up, uh, Windows 10 IoT Core. The first one is this website, our dev center. If you're looking for a quick link, we actually use windowsondevices.com, which takes you to the same place. It's our Microsoft dev center, um, and it's yeah. our homepage where everything is. So this, this website's great. It has a lot of documentation and samples. Um, all these docs explain what the operating system is, all the features, how to use them. Um, we have a ton of samples. They're all code samples that you can download, look, use in your own projects uh, just to get you started. They range from very simple very complex. Right. We have driver samples, and yeah. you know, and it's all on GitHub. It's all yeah, yeah it's all on GitHub. It there. It's cool. all open source. Um, the big button is the get started button. Yeah. So let's click that. Um, we support a bunch of different devices. These are our main suggested devices. There are others. The community has other right. devices that you can get started with. These are the ones we personally support. So we have a Raspberry Pi 2 starter pack. Raspberry Pi 2, 3, which are our most popular among makers, mm -hmm. the Dragon Board, Intel Jewel, and a Middleboard Max. 
Cool. I've actually never heard of the MINA board. That's, that's new to me. Yeah. But <laughs> lots of devices. So imagining that you're me and you have fresh equipment, you've ordered them online, mm -hmm. and you have a blank ST card, um, this will actually walk you through you know, the different versions. We have IoT Core, our main release branch, and if you're wanting mm -hmm. to get the latest and greatest, there's the Insider Preview, which is pretty cool. cool. Um, a lot of people actually choose to get with the Insider Preview just because you know, we're IoT and we want to stay up to date and you know, yeah. get all the cool stuff. Yeah, I did, I did both and they both worked well for me. It's cool that you guys have the preview for you know, even, even Windows IoT, right? Yeah. The preview program. Yeah. Um, so you do need Windows 10. That is mm -hmm. one thing that, that people need to know is you do need Windows 10 to mm -hmm. run simply because our whole experience is based on you know, a PC connecting with the device and back and forth. Sure. So, um, once you're ready, it's the IoT dashboard that gets you started. And that's an application that gets downloaded onto your desktop. It looks like this. Yep. So we got it running here. And I, and I found this very useful and very, very simple. There's not a ton of buttons on the left, that's but right. the main thing is, is this device setup, right? Right, right. Um, and so what it does, it allows you to select the board type that you want to flash, um, your build. This one is only IoT core. And it finds the SD card on your device. I don't have one in, in my computer right now, um, but it basically, uh, Finds your, finds your SD card, downloads it, flashes it, and when you're ready, you can plug it in, and it will actually find your device. So mine's Steve, Raspberry Pi 3, and you cool. can actually see it. Um, I do want to talk about SD cards, though, because SD cards are actually very important. <laughs> I, I had trouble with an SD card. I, I bought one that I didn't check if it was compatible, yeah. and the device couldn't see it. So yeah. there you go. I've, I've been one of the troublemakers. Yeah, so uh, SD cards are very important because if they're not compatible, they won't work. Right. right? You need the proper amount of space, which is, uh, we generally suggest 16 gigs, which seems like a lot. Mm -hmm. And even though the operating system is not nearly that big, um, we have updates that we ha want to push down. If you want to build your apps and you want to store stuff in them, right, you need that space. Yeah. If you want to build like a photo, um, viewer, frame viewer, a database, whatever you yeah. want to do. That, that's the hard drive for your device. Yeah. So everything that your, your app does, it needs that space to, totally. to make it work. Yeah. And the speed matters. Um, it, it the really, SD card speed The SD card speed yeah. matters a lot. So on first boot, we've noticed that um, this is the card I actually use right here. It's the Samsung Evo. Um, cool. This is my personal favorite. It's tried and true for me. I know it always works. Um, 16 gigs, class 10. Um, this one boots in about four minutes on first boot and about one to two minutes on, on second boot. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen other cards that aren't compatible somehow still work take up to 15 times longer. Right. So you can see how big of a difference it is yeah, between you, you the You want to have the right card. I mean, yeah. I think that that's the bottom, bottom line there. Yeah. You, you want to have a card enough space that has enough performance that it can work and it's yeah. compatible so there's no problem. Yeah. And we actually have uh, a list of suggested cards online. If you um, go to set up your device, you can actually see um, SD view uh, recommended cards. Yeah. I found that list after I bought the wrong card. Yeah. So, lesson learned, but <laughs> it's good to have the, the actual list. And then the one other thing that I learned the hard way was remember that password during setup. So, in here, you, you've got the, the admin username and password, yeah. and, and I had actually forgotten mine the first time I set it up. So, I right. had to reburn the card. It wasn't the end of the world. My app still deployed, yeah. but it cost me about half an hour. That's right. Yeah. So, remember your password. That. Cool. Uh, the other big one is once you've, once you've set up, right, mm -hmm. uh, is the device portal which is a really, really cool app. We have it actually here. I cool. have actually have it open. Yeah. Um, and this is essentially a connection to the, to the device. So there's actually mm -hmm. an application running on your board, and it's remotely displaying this web browser, and we're connected to it right now. So you can do all sorts of cool stuff, like change the device name, change your password once you connect in. Yeah, so assuming you, you can connect. Uh, you can take screenshots. Um, the big one is obviously controlling apps. This is really how you install apps you know, switch between them, view what's going on in your device. Um, if you want to take a look at your file explorer, we can see what's on the actual device itself. Yeah. Um, processes, what you would expect with the task manager. Performance, you can see, you know, CPU usage or I.O. usage. Yeah, this really is very good. useful for like understanding what, what's going on in the actual yeah. device, what's installed, you know, otherwise you'd have a harder, much harder time. Yeah, you know? really, yeah, really great. Super, super awesome stuff. You can even do debugging. Um, Bluetooth, you want to get connected uh, with network stuff. You know, we have it all here. Yeah. So this is really this is really the main hub for any debugging, any work you want to do with the board. Um, mm -hmm. Outside of Visual Studio, this is your main go-to tool. Uh, the other big thing that's a big value prop for us is Windows Update. Yeah. So security in IoT is something I get asked about all the time. Like, oh, yeah. are you guys it's in the news all the time. Now. Yeah. 
you know, people are getting hacked with their, you know, kettles and um, you know, their washing machines. So security comes built in into Windows. And you it's, don't want your fridge to attack you. That's right. That's, that's right. And so uh, when we work with, you know, big OEMs and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, they choose us because, you know, we're secure. And we do our best to make sure it's, it's secure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With Windows update, just like you would expect in your corporate network for your, you know, laptops or machines or your home machine, yeah. whatever. I mean, this, that's the beauty. And, and I actually was... Um, like playing around for the very first time, like in this dashboard with my IoT device, and I went in there and I was like, "Oh, it's doing a Windows update." Yeah. And I actually got a little bit annoyed. I'm like, "Oh, it's doing a Windows update. Great, I'm gonna have to yeah. reboot the device." But then I thought about, it, I'm like, "That's actually also really awesome because now this device is more secure. It probably fix some bugs, whatever it is, right? It rolls out patches, and we don't have to worry about it. And you can certainly configure that, right? You yeah. Don't, you don't have to allow it, but by default, this device tries to keep itself up to date." Um, now, we mentioned that application deployment uh, from the portal is possible, but it's worth just pointing out that VS will do that for you, right, in, yeah. in the debug scenario, but this is there in case you've got your package already built. You're not there for debugging purposes. Yeah. You maybe you just flashed a new, a new device. You just want to throw the app on there so right. you can take the package and yeah. use the web UI. And if you want to make it a default app that runs every time, if you've built a product that you want to send to your friends right. or you're ready to push out, you can actually you know, send it and set it as a default app, so that's the, the app that comes up every single time. Cool. Right, so we, you've got the dashboard to get things set up, and then you get in the web interface for the device portal mm -hmm. to make sure things are running well, things are updated, yeah. you can check performance as you're debugging, keep it open while VS is also running, running some app. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool stuff. All right, so uh, when you get through that part of the journey, um, all right, you're, you're a developer, what's your next step? How do you jump in there and actually start debugging as the device? So the big, that. Yeah, the big thing is Visual Studio. Um, and we actually have some samples. You can actually download them. Um, I can actually show you. Here, uh, we have a bunch of samples on GitHub that you can download. Yeah, it's a quite extensive library. It's a large list that we keep up to date. So you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff to get you going. And I've actually downloaded them onto my desktop. And um, we're going to run through two of them. The first one is Hello World, your standard very first one, just to kind of show you what's going on. And so this is Hello World. Very, very simple. Mm -hmm. It's a UWP app. Um, and all it does is basically, you know, shows some text, and when you click a button, it says "Hello World." Yep, the canonical "Hello World." Yeah. So uh, I've already configured it. I've pre-configured it. I think you can see it when I click in Properties. That um, I've connected to my device called yep, Steve R53. So cool. you can see it. Um, unencrypted. It's just you and I on the network, and we're going to run it. So if we switch to the Raspberry Pi 3, we can see that it's there it goes. It's about to deploy. And there it is. OK, so I've connected a mouse. This is the very few times I actually use a mouse on the Raspberry Pi 3. So when I click it, switch back to VS. We'll see the, the breakpoint there. There you go. And there it is. Yeah, so gonna... it, it's, it's really, to me, uh, the magic of all of this has been the fact that that's just a standard mouse. Yeah. You know, that's just standard Visual Studio. There's mm -hmm. nothing s special about it in, in that sort of context, right? So you can hook up any, any wired keyboard mouse works with win Windows IoT. Yeah. Um, I've, I have a, a wireless, you know, Bluetooth adapter I added to my older board. Yeah. Then I added Wi-Fi to my older board. Like I was playing around, things just work for the most part. I had trouble with only one Bluetooth keyboard, but that wasn't ever claimed to be a supported scenario. So yeah. I just tried to push it. But, uh, but yeah, these boards do have Bluetooth often, or you can add Definitely. an adapter. Yeah. Um, the other uh, thing to show is like a lot of these uh, samples work with, with stuff like this, right? So totally. you, you get little hardware. Like that, that, that's the learning curve also. Like you need certain hardware to run certain samples and actually get, get successful execution from them. Some of them are just plug and play. Yeah. Some of them use those pin boards, right? That's uh, right. Cool. That's right. And we're actually going to move to the next sample. And I'm going to walk through some of the hardware in this, in this box here so mm -hmm. we can see what it takes to make an LED blink. Cool. So Let's this, take a look at that. Yeah, so this is the uh, Adafruit. I'm just going to scooch this out. Yep. Out Let's way. move it. We've got lots of fun here. toys here. So it comes with a little card. Um, we love our cards. Yeah. We love little blue cards. I, yeah. I have a collection of them. <laughs> so it comes with all sorts of cool equipment that you can get. And I'll just kind of walk you through all the different things. So it comes with your standard SD card. This one's 16 gigs. Um, your LEDs for blinking, which we're going to do in a second. Mm -hmm. um, comes with push buttons, which are pretty cool. Yeah. You know, make all sorts of cool stuff there. Uh, resistors, for those that don't know, um, comes with different ones. So there's different mm -hmm. resistors. And essentially what they do is um, 
Uh, they actually change the resistance based on the color codes, and you can find them online, um, but that's how you tell, for those that don't know. Uh, these are potentiometers. These are pretty cool. So when you actually uh, connect them, you can potentiate and mm -hmm. change the, um, the brightness of an LED oh, cool. by turning them, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, we have a photocell, which detects light. Um, and we've got some more stuff here. This is a temperature and humidity sensor down here. And on the other side, we have an RGB sensor which detects color. Cool. So you can do all sorts of cool stuff. Yeah, and all of these are, are these little pin type interfaces, right? So they yeah. all plug into one of, what do they call those little white boards? So on the other side, over here, we have a yeah. breadboard. And bread this boards, is basically right. a way to connect all of your stuff. Yeah. And they, they send signals and route signals through each other. Mm -hmm. So uh, we also have wires, which are essential. Always need wires. A uh, power cable. Yep, and all these power cables for like the, the Pi kits and everything else is just standard micro USB yeah. adapters. So I have a ton of those, that's yeah. no problem. A case. And obviously the Raspberry Pi 3. Cool. So this is a really good way to get started. Yeah. Uh, just kind of get a feel for the equipment. And I know a lot of experienced people don't need these. They have all the stuff already. Once you start, you kind of get a yeah. nice collection of everything. I have so much stuff in this, in this white box that I got originally as a gift. And then um, it came with the Pi 2, but I bought one of these shells. I, I just went on Amazon. I, f I forget even what, what company makes them. I don't know if it's Pi or not. But it's, it's really cool. So it's like uh, really easy to install, snappable shell for the kit and it fully comes off and just I can take my pie right out of it so that was cool um, so if you need to have let's say a pie as, a, as an experiment let's say yeah. somewhere where it needs to be a little more rugged you can put it in the shell there's one in there you can buy one um, <laughs> the hard thing after this episode is making sure we, we leave with our own stuff yeah that's right I don't steal any of your hardware here but it's pretty cool and um, some of the other differences that I found is like when you get uh, one of these seat kits so I, I bought one of these uh, uh, groove starter kits for IoT. Um, it was slightly different, so it doesn't have like the uh, the breadboard. Instead, um, here I'll show you guys. So it has one of these intermediate boards, and you plug in with one of these cables all the sensors that it comes with, and then you plug this into your Raspberry Pi. That's right. And they're all boltable, right? So we have lots of bolt spots. We can we can screw these things in together, um, and it works really well. So there's there's a bunch of different way you connect the the hardware, but at the end of the day, uh, the software just will just work with it. Right? Yeah. And there's a reason people like the Raspberry Pi. It comes with a lot of accessories. Yeah. Um, there's a lot out there since the community is so large and the yeah, maker community huge. and all that sort of stuff. So cool. Good for starters. And uh, I've ran into like Hackster.io quite a bit when I was searching. What is that site all about? Is that a Microsoft site or? So it's yeah. not a Microsoft site, but uh, we we like Hackster a lot. Hackster mm -hmm. is basically a great way for the community to put together projects and show off what they've done. Yeah. A lot of people put open source code there, so you can look at it. You can use it for yourself build on it, uh, start your own projects. Really great way to find ideas and see how things are done. Cool. Yeah, I, I found a bunch of cool projects. Not all of them had source code, but some of them did, did yeah. link back. Uh, but it seems like a very active community. There was projects being posted yeah. quite a bit, and a lot of them use the Pi. Definitely. the most popular one. Definitely. Cool. So we have one more demo you want to show, right, for, from a code perspective. Yeah. So uh, slightly, you know, maybe two more lines of code than this one, but gets people going. Yeah. Like, like we said in the beginning, I, th I think coding is easy. Right? I mean, you can figure out the code. It, yeah. it was figuring out, like, you know, which kits do I buy? What, what hardware do I need? What the hell is that white board with lots of holes in it? Like, yeah. It was all very confusing to me at first, but then it kind of comes together. Totally. So I'm actually going to show you a diagram. Um, we can find it in our samples. Yeah, the, I know which one you're going for. It was very a little blinky. And so we have a whole bunch of samples with tutorials mm -hmm. on them that shows you what you need to get started. This one's a little different. This LED takes a little bit of a different uh, resistor mm -hmm. than your traditional 200 ohm resistor, so ignore the colors. But we basically have a diagram that shows you how to hook it up. Right. Um, so it's easy for you. You just need to you know, count the pins and plug them in. So you can see if we switch to my board, my real board, you can see I've kind of emulated it so you can see exactly what it looks like. Um, so there's a wire that connects to this pin that goes up. Um, and the neat thing about breadboards, for those of you that don't know, is the signal can pass along one of the rows, but it can't go across, up mm. and down, um, which, is, which is kind of important. And the only way to connect them is with other hardware components. So if you look, this wire here connects here. It passes a signal up to this side of the LED, mm -hmm. and then the signal goes up and then down, and the current passes down this next row through the resistor, up here, and then this black wire 
goes all the way back to the Raspberry Pi, connecting a whole circuit. Cool. And that's it. There's nothing, there's nothing super complicated about connecting a Blinky. So we're just going to go ahead and run it. Let's make it blink. And let's switch to the Raspberry Pi. And you can see it's blinking. And if we cool. switch back to the camera, we can see that it's actually blinking. Cool. Yeah, this is really cool stuff. Um, I, I think, you know, again, like as a Visual Studio developer, nothing intimidating about the, demo, the code samples That's we right. showed, right? And in future episodes, I'll bring other guests. We'll, we'll drive into a lot more code samples. I really want to work on this topic over a couple of episodes. But Absolutely. without this base knowledge, it's really like this was so intimidating to me. It was like the, if I'd never got like a like a, one of these boards as a gift from yeah. somebody, I wouldn't probably have started. I would have seen it as like, oh, I don't know anything about soldering. I don't know anything about hardware really. Like yeah. I can put a computer together, but, but those are parts that snap in. Mm -hmm. Well, this stuff is just like that, right? The, yeah. the fact that these boards are basically mostly snap in. That, that breadboard is the hardest thing in terms of like you have to figure out or you just know what a ground wire is or That's right. basic knowledge. And most of it is up on, on our sample site, right? Yeah. And, and documentation. Yeah. And we, cool. we try our best to make it super easy to get started, yeah. especially for beginners because, you know, we think it's the future of building connected devices. Oh, that's really awesome. Well, I think we, we've, got, we've got a lot of good stuff here. Anything else you want to cover? And that's it. So um, I think the next episode's probably going to cover Azure, yeah. our connected to Azure, which Azure's is a really a big, big scenario, yeah. especially for those that want to make real products, you know, collect data, use Azure, um, and then talk about our journey. So really, Windows uh, 10 and Windows 10 IoT Core is about taking an idea um, and making it a real product. And so right. we support people through that whole journey where they want to jump off uh, after making something really fun, or if they want to take it all the way to a commercial product, right. put it in markets. You know, we work with, with real builders to make real products, and that's our goal. Yeah, and people don't, don't realize just how much Windows there is out there in the world, mm -hmm. right? Uh, most ATM machines are like running Windows Embedded. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of his historic stuff, and I think moving to, to one Windows has really helped us you know, I think clarify the message of like, yeah, Windows will run on something this small, yep. something that big, my phone, whichever it is, and, and you guys support people all the way through, so that's really awesome. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much for coming on. I think it's been a great introductory episode. I hope folks out there liked it, and uh, be back for more Windows AT. so thank you very yep. much for being here. Thanks a lot. Thank you, folks.